you asked a good question a few minutes ago. You asked, would lithium aluminum hydride react with carboxylic acid similarly to or different from the ketone? So let's talk about that. How, how could it react similarly? Well, if it was going to react similarly, the hydride here would attack the carbonyl. Now, um, can you think of any reasons why they, might not, why they might not act similarly? Is there anything else that might happen between the hydride and the acid besides the nucleophilic attack? Is there any reason why they might not be similar? That's kind of a little bit of a hard question. Um, well, um, just because uh, because of resonance, it's gonna it's gonna make it. Um, well, like in the ketone, mm -hmm. for instance, you have the pi bond connected to the carbonyl oxygen and the uh, and the carbonyl carbon. So basically, all the electron density is right there at that point. Okay. Where on the um, carboxylic acid, the electron density can not only move from that oxygen, but it can transfer down to the hydroxyl oxygen. Okay. So it seems like it would be, it would make it less delta positive. But I don't know if that's ah, right. I see. So you're saying that maybe this should be uh, less reactive over yeah. here. Okay. Now let's see. That actually is a little bit of a complicated um, issue here. You're asking who, which of these is more electrophilic? You're asking who's more electrophilic? That's a little bit of a, a, a complicated issue here. Although I think you might have started, um, so at the end of that series on carboxylic acid, was there a section on reactivity there? Yeah. Yeah, where, and I think, so, and the key thing is they showed that the most important thing this oxygen does, the most important thing about this oxygen is not that it's electronegative, but that it can donate electrons through resonance. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing I think you were leaving out of that explanation. So it seems like if it's going to um, donate its, um, well, it seems like since that would be more apt to give up this proton, that that would just snag the other proton coming from the, uh, it would, would it even get a chance to attack the nucleophile? Attack the electrophile. The electrophile. Okay. All right. All right, that, that's really good. So it, it turned out that the, the first line of thought you were going through turned out not to be a, exactly what the key issue was here, but that what you were just saying is the key issue. You, you really put your finger on the key issue here. So talking about the second point, we've already seen that there's two things that can happen with a carboxylic acid. A nucleophile can attack the carbonyl, or it can just deprotonate. The complicated thing here is that a nucleophile could attack the carbonyl, or this could just deprotonate. Uh, and you put your finger on the problem, it seems like the hydride would simply deprotonate um, this carboxylic acid. After all, remember a, a couple minutes ago I was saying we have to keep lithium aluminum hydride away from acids because acids just destroy the hydride by protonating it. Well, it seems like you could have the same result here. Okay, so, so that's, a good, um, that's a good point here. And I guess we won't get into the reactivity issue right now because that was covered in the other video series anyway. All right, I, actually I guess we don't need to. So. Um, yeah, so we should cut a, a long story short here. You might expect that the acid here would simply destroy um, the uh, would, would simply destroy the lithium aluminum hydride here. And in a sense, I think that happens. I do think that the first thing that happens here is that this gets deprotonated. And we know that now we would not expect this to be very electrophilic because of the negative charge. However, surprisingly, it turns out that another hydride still will now attack here. Even though this is negative, lithium aluminum hydride is just very reactive. It's so reactive that it's able to overcome even this negative charge. So now we will still get the nucleophilic attack. I think that this is a, no one is. I think it's possible that no one's quite sure exactly what the mechanism looks here like here because it's kind of surprising. Uh, let's see what else does your uh... yeah okay that, that's about as much as we need to say here. So we would expect that first this would get deprotonated. But the hydride is so reactive that somehow it's still able to attack this carbonyl despite the negative charge over here. So at this point on, the mechanism gets kind of weird or um, unknown, perhaps. And we'll go through the rest of the mechanism. We'll just predict what the product will be. It turns out, uh, so we'll just memorize that lithium aluminum hydride has the same exact result on a carboxylic acid that it would have on the aldehyde or ketone. So it's gonna, is it going to produce a diol? Ah, that's a good question, except um, it turns out that by same exact result, I mean that it just turns it into an alcohol, a regular alcohol. 
And we, we won't bother going through the whole mechanism there because it's kind of weird and maybe not fully understood anyway. So let's number the carbons. Here's the number one and here's the number two. Now the number two here is a carboxyl carbon. Mm -hmm. And it's simply going to turn into a normal alcohol carbon. And we're really not going to talk much more about the mechanism for this. So we'll, we'll just memorize this outcome. It's just as if this had started like an aldehyde. We get the same result as if this had started as an aldehyde. So I guess I should have said, um, an attack of lithium aluminum hydride on a carboxylic acid gives the same result as if it attacked the aldehyde. The attack result here is the same as if it attacked so the aldehyde. So uh, the negative oxygen wouldn't snag a proton from the water? So you would well, have two oxygens, or two alcohols? Um, let's see. It, it, it might eventually, but remember, the water is not added until the hydride is finished oh, doing okay. its job. So there's going to be a bunch of hydride attacks before we even add the water. There's going to be a bunch of hydride attacks before we even add the water. Um, the, the only point of the water is probably before we add the water, we probably have something that looks like this. And then after we add the water, it looks like this. So, so which oxygen leaves then? Let's see. Good question. I would expect. Oh, I would expect that uh, it really doesn't matter. Because um, after all, after this attack, they're going to be the same. Okay. After this attack, so there's just going to be two O minuses. Uh, and again, this should strike us as very weird because we've hardly ever seen something with two negative charges. But somehow, um, there are stabilizing factors here. I think maybe the aluminum here helps to stabilize these charges. I think the aluminum might get close and form um, bonds that help to stabilize these charges, but we don't need to get into those details. Uh, in any case, uh, yeah, so we don't need to get into the details. All we need to say is the attack of lithium aluminum hydride on a carboxylic acid gives the same exact product as if you were attacking an aldehyde. So if this was an aldehyde, it would have turned into ethanol, and that's what we have here. Okay. Um, so we just ended with this. Um, all, the only point I wanted to make about the mechanism is that it was kind of surprising. This might not be what we expect, but it happens anyway because this hydride is so reactive. So by the way, this would not work with sodium borohydride. Remember we saw earlier that sodium borohydride is not as reactive as lithium aluminum hydride. So um, we would not add sodium borohydride to get these results. This only works with lithium aluminum hydride. We saw that an aldehyde or a ketone could be reduced by either the lithium aluminum hydride or the sodium borohydride. But a carboxylic acid can only be reduced to an alcohol by the lithium aluminum hydride. Then we won't worry about the mechanism. In fact, so for problem solving purposes, we're just going to go from here to here. We won't worry about drawing the mechanism at all. OK. Uh, I think uh, your instructor wrote this like this, but it might be more difficult to write this like H3O plus, although even the water should suffice for protonating here. But it does have to be a separate step, because we don't want the water to destroy the hydride. All right, so when would you use this in a synthesis? Well, if you're trying to turn a carboxylic acid into an alcohol, this is the way to go. If you're trying to turn a carboxylic acid into an alcohol, you can reduce it with lithium aluminum hydride. This is considered a reduction. Remember, an oxidation is when you gain bonds to oxygen. So a reduction is when you're losing bonds to oxygen. Well, this carbon had three bonds to oxygen, one, two, three, and this carbon has only one bond to oxygen. So this is a lithium aluminum hydride reduction. It's somewhat similar to when hydrides reduce aldehydes and ketones, but whereas it's important to go through the mechanism for aldehydes and ketones, this mechanism is more mysterious, so we won't worry about the mechanism here. All right. Let's predict the products. We just want to predict the final product.
couple problems there. Got the basic idea, but a couple of problems.